Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. I have a very special guest on today, Vicki St. James. Hey, Vicki. Hey, Teresa. Thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. All right. Let me tell a little bit about you. Vicki okay. has done a lot. Okay. So Vicki is an on-air personality marketing executive. She hosts a daily radio program on Corn Country 106.5 FM from two to six Mondays through Fridays. So mm -hmm. she's on five days a week. In addition to her radio program, she writes and she produces and voices original radio commercials for a diverse client base. And she also works closely with the nonprofit Bakery Tripi, whose mission is to teach life skills through meaningful work to a diverse group of girls. Vicki, I mean, the list goes on and on. You're also a professional <laughs> editor and literary agent. You own your own company. And you know, um, you're a professor and you, you do all sorts of things. And Aww. I cannot wait for my <laughs> listeners to hear all about you. So welcome Aww. to Shape by Faith. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Okay. So I would love to hear just a little bit about your background. So tell us about your childhood and where you grew up and what your family life was like. Absolutely. So I was actually born in La Crosse, Wisconsin. However, I only lived there six weeks because my papa was working for the Milwaukee Road, uh, uh, the railroad, and um, they were cutting back and a lot of the people were uh, losing their jobs. So he did some research and he came to find out that John Deere in Waterloo, Iowa ah. was, was actually hiring and that agricultural industry was booming. Yes. And so he sent his application in, got hired immediately. We moved down to Waterloo, Iowa, and that's where I lived most of my adult life until age 17 when I moved to Minneapolis, lived there for a decade, and then came back to Iowa, and I've been here ever since. Okay. So my, I have one brother who's two years older than me, Greg Schiffer, a sweetheart. We're very close, just like this. We're both strong Christians, um, but we weren't always, you know, mm -hmm. we, we both came to the Lord uh, on our own terms in adolescence and um, have never looked back. All and right. so, yes, and we went to um, religion, we had religious education, so it was Catholic, um, but I loved, you know, learning about Jesus. I loved the fact that my school promoted Jesus in a close relationship with him, and that was beautiful all the way from first grade through 12th grade. Oh, wow, that is fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. So I understand you had, and you still have, a love for reading, but, it's, you know, especially in your childhood, tell us about yes. that. Oh my gosh, well, tremendous love for reading. I started writing my own books at age six and I, wow. still, have, I still have most of them. Um, and they were actually pretty philosophical. I would just let my imagination run. So I remember one, I was seven and I have this book, it's called Our World. And I was in my room, I spent a lot of time in my room. Um, I just, honestly, I was a victim of sexual abuse as a child, mm. um, a relative, and it was horrific. And so, but my, my daddy defended me. He took care of the situation, went to this person and it never happened again, but that's a very difficult thing mm. for a child to go through. So for mm. myself, I would just be in my room a lot, either mm -hmm. reading, writing, or painting, or coloring. So that was just my solace to be alone. Yeah. And so yeah. the one book, um, My World, I was looking out the window, and I saw, and I'm all of seven years old, I saw a little boy and a little girl walking down the street holding hands. And I was like, hmm, this is an interesting relationship. I wonder if they're cousins, brother and sister, friends, you know, what is it that makes that relationship so special? Mm -hmm. And then I I talked about, you know, God and how God can bring people together. And um, because of their shared love for Jesus, then they can grow in their friendships. And that's wow. where I went with that. I know that's where I went <laughs> with that book. And it's called Our World. And I love it. I've got many, many books in boxes in my basement. I did this all the way through until I graduated from high school. I was writing these wow. books. And then um, 
I just, you know, the, you asked me about reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I was 13, my love of reading started at Cross Lake, Minnesota. We were on a family vacation and I realized they had a library there. I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. Instead of running out and playing in the sand, I just spent most of my time in that library with these books. And I came across the most beautiful book, Wuthering Heights by Emily Mm. Bronte. Mm -hmm. And it really, really spoke to me. I love the moors. I love the mystery. I love the fact that Heathcliff was a very conflicted protagonist, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think I've ever since then, I've been looking for my Heathcliff. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Wow. God has put a lot of creativity in you. You I know that, Vicki. And you've used it and you're continuing to use a creativity play. Have you ever thought about getting those books published that you wrote as a child? Maybe, but I have also written a book on Abe Lincoln as an adult, and I've written a book oh, on JF, yeah. JFK as That's an adult. That's awesome. And yes. so I think I would start with them. Yeah. But here's the thing, Teresa. I have this, it's sort of like private. It's mm-hmm. hard for me to think about mm-hmm. the whole world reading yeah. my yeah. thoughts, although they were both, the Lincoln and the Kennedy were both um, master's thesis, so I had... Um, you know, I was told, oh, she get these published. These are amazing yeah. by the professors on, you know, the committee. But then I still have this, oh, I'm not sure. But mm. someday, someday mm-hmm. I will. Yeah. And those, yeah. you know, and the ones for, for youth, yes, someday. Did you ever think as a child you'd be doing what you're doing now? No. And you know how that all transpired. It was interesting. Like you, I was a fitness instructor. That was my uh, only adult job that I, well, I did do portraits, um, Back in the 70s, I started doing portraits for hire for $50 a piece. I'll tell you what, if I had that money right now, I'd be a millionaire. (laughs) Because think about $50 then versus now, right? I know. Um, And I always had one going. People would hear about me. I'd always have one going. So that was my other job. And then I worked at an artist supply shop as well. But um, yeah, to answer your question. So I started uh, teaching fitness classes because, well, um, I wanted to get back in shape after the first baby. Mm -hmm. And so I started started teaching well I actually started working in the nursery at the YMCA and then one of the women who was teaching came up to me and said hey you know we need an instructor would you mind doing we'll teach you we'll train you we'll send you to Des Moines and get certified would you just do this for us you'd have to leave the nursery would you come to us I'm like (laughs) sure I could do that (laughs) so they they uh they did they certified me and I loved I did that for a decade one morning my favorite class to teach well my favorite class was actually prenatal aerobics love that and I still Mm. get together with the mother's Um, whose children are now having their own babies, (laughs) which is interesting. But my other favorite class was 6 a.m. aerobics because, well, you know what? You got to have the dedicated people at 6 a.m., right? That's right. So the gentleman comes up to me who is now 92. And at the time he was in his 60s. And he's like, Vicki, you need to be um, in broadcasting. So what do you want? He's like, what do you want? Do you want TV? Do you want radio? I was like, (laughs) I'm a mother, single mother. (laughs) Of then four children, now five children. Um, I said, I've never been to college. I I don't think this is going to work for me. He says, no, you've got the personality and you've got great pronunciation and, um, you know, diction and all that, you know, enunciation. He's like, you've got it all. But do you want TV or radio? I said, well, if I had a choice, I would do radio. Why? Because you have to actually use your imagination Mm -hmm. to just theater of the mind rather than all right there in front of you right he's like okay I know someone in radio here's the number you give him a call you tell him John sent you I call him that afternoon he says tomorrow why don't you come in we'll do a voiceover I assumed there'd be a bunch of people waiting Mm -hmm. and I'd be like trying out for this I did (laughs) I did one cut and he's like you are the voice of Porter's camera warehouse outlet permanently going forward oh my goodness what (laughs) <laughs> what? wow i know television and radio he's like the, you're the voice i'm like whoa isn't so, that amazing it's how amazing. god does things yes yes so after i'd done that for 10 years i did the fitness instruction for 10 years i determined mm-hmm. this is a fun gig i'm gonna put all of my radio commercials on a cassette tape send it around with my resume which really is is no experience other than these voiceovers but send it to all the radio stations in my region got 
lots of, you know, interest in my mm -hmm. resume and in my voice. And I got some great offers, but they were too far away. I had small children. I could, yeah. you know, like you, yeah. you have to be yeah. very careful. That's so, right. Um, the 102.9 was a fabulous. They were going to pay me so much money to go there, but my children would have been an hour away. What if oh. one of them is yeah. hurt? And I, you know, so I couldn't do it. So then my eldest son, who is now 42, said, um, back then he was 12, 13. He's like, mama, have you tried my radio station i said what's your radio station he said well it's news talk I oh said, my you listen goodness. to news talk and he's like i sure do it's 12 50 a.m it's an a.m station in cedar falls so i sent my cassette to them which is where i work now we've expanded clearly from that mm. little, little itty bitty a.m station now my owner of this Kolov Media owns 14 different radio stations. Oh, but that, wow. that was his first one. And, and he hired me on the spot. He said, Vicki, I'm going to open an FM station next year. Will you start on my little AM? Will you, <laughs> will you just like fill in for me when I go on vacation? And then when it's time for that one to launch, you'll do 10 to 2 Monday through Friday. I'm like, yeah, wow. I'm in. I said, but you got to teach me because all I've ever done is voiceovers. He's like, I got you. Oh, that He's a is wonderful awesome. man. Absolutely wonderful man. And Let's, our stations, like they're award winning. This man, the station owner, Jim Kolak, mm -hmm. his idea back 27 years ago was I want to help locally, uh, local, chronically and terminally ill children in, in this community. Oh. How can I best serve them? Well, he came up with an idea and it was to take children every fall, all expenses paid, mom and dad, every sibling in that family, doctors and nurses to care for those children down to Disney World mm. in Florida and every year for, for a week. And they go down That's there, we, we pay for it. He finds all these people to finance this. So because of all of that, we have won five, Crystal Awards, which is a nationwide um, award given to radio stations mm -hmm. for community service, and then one Heritage Award. When you get five of those, you can compete at the heritage level, and we won that as well. That's incredible. So, yeah. Incredible. It's, it's amazing. Let's take a real quick break, okay? We'll be right back with more Shape Absolutely. by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Vicki St. James is my guest. She is an on-air personality. She does it all. She does. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> you really do. You really do. You work thank at you. an award-winning radio station. It's incredible what you're doing there and what everyone's doing there. Um, so where are you exactly Vicki, like if someone wanted to listen to your show, tell us oh, about yeah, that. I would love yeah. that. Yeah. So we stream around the world at iowacorncountry.com. Okay. You can download the app from the App Store. Any App Store has us 106.5 Corn Country. On the mm -hmm. FM dial, it's 106.5 FM. All right. Yeah. Okay. So everyone heard that. We need to tune in. There now, you go. I, I, I know you raised five kids mm -hmm. and I know they're all grown. So, yep. and you raised them as a single mom. Yep. So, and I believe me, I know, but I, I only did that for five years. I know yeah. how challenging that is. Yeah. So tell us about your kids. Sure, tell us I'd about, love to. yeah, mm -hmm. whatever you yeah. want to say. All I ever wanted to do as a young person was have children. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my great goal. I didn't want to do anything else but raise children. So um, to say I have five beautiful children is like the greatest joy of my life. And my children range in age from 25 to 42. Wow. Three, yeah, three <laughs> sons and two daughters. And then I have three grandchildren, mm -hmm. a six-year-old grandson, an 11-year-old granddaughter, and a 16-year-old granddaughter. Well, I can so, tell yes. you radiate when you're talking uh -huh. about that. <laughs> There you go. Oh There's my gosh. nothing like children. There's nothing like grandchildren, is right. there? Exactly. I mean, just amazing. Yeah. So how did you instill your faith into your children, mm -hmm. you know, when you were raising them? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and my... My eldest four have a wonderful father and stepmother. Let's just put it that way. So okay. it was while okay. I was raising yeah. mine alone, yes. yes. But on week weekends, every other weekend and one night a week, they were with them and they had a tremendous, in, you know, impact on mm -hmm. them as well. Wonderful people. Love them. Love them both. 
So um, we had that. And then, of course, my mama and daddy, um, my daddy has since passed, but um, mm -hmm. they lived in Minneapolis and they, too, would would help from time to time. Every spring break, they would take my children for the week. Aww, that's and, nice. Yeah, my children had the best memories of that. You know, just little things like going to the grocery store together. Mm -hmm. And my mama would say, grandma would say, OK, you can pick out your own cereal. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Our own, very own. So things like that. They still remember all of that right. simple the simple joys of life of being with grandma and grandpa and then like mm -hmm. my 42 year old son has said boy grandpa had to be in his 60s and he would pick up a tennis rack and say okay kids let's go play tennis you know right so yeah. I have the great grandparents taking care of my kiddos every spring break for the whole week which is beautiful how but wonderful your, yes but your question about the faith they also are very strong in their faith and and they both gave their hearts to jesus christ when i was um in elementary school mm -hmm. so they they love jesus and so that was passed on to be their passion um i just every night before bed all of the technology would go off at eight o'clock and then I would read to them, not just Christian books, but any book that they wanted to read. I'd go from room to room reading. And this would go on for two hours to get all the way through oh them. Oh, my all. goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I loved it. I loved it so much. And then, of course, we would always pray. We would mm. pray at the end of, you know, each night's readings. So they it was just part of their life, mm -hmm. a very important part of their life. And they were raised in... Um, you know, non-traditional or um, non-denominational churches. Gotcha. Uh, I left the Catholic faith when they wouldn't, they wouldn't marry me. I had to do all this like pre-Cana stuff because I was 19. They're like, we don't know. Well, um, I said, you know what? I'm just going to the Protestant church because they'll let me get married. So we were together 14 <laughs> years, you know, right? So that's right. why I went to Protestant. I and gotcha. Then, yeah. So, and then I've also, my eldest son, my eldest two children were uh, confirmed in the Lutheran church. So we've done all different denominations mm -hmm. <laughs> well-rounded yeah, well yeah well-rounded all right now as, yeah oh go ahead vicky i was just gonna say i just would always tell them you know all denominations you know uh point to jesus just mm -hmm. you would just pick what is best for you and but that's what you know i would take them every sunday to we we move around we you know yeah we tried the brethren church we tried um spirit-filled churches and yeah we just we had a good time all yeah. right. So mm -hmm. now, is it true that you went to college when you were like 40? Yep. 40 years of age. Yes. All right. All right, Vicki, tell us about it. <laughs> I think that's incredible. Oh, Not thank 40 you. 40 years sweetheart. old, but I know, right? it's unusual. You know? Yeah, it is unusual. Yeah. And I'm one of those weird kids. I was always one of those weird kids that loved like test days. I'm like, man, I worked so seriously? hard. I can't. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, I can't wait to take a test. I can't wait. And then they, they would have me help the children who had anxiety about oh. tests. They'd have me talk to them and get them to a new place of understanding. Wow. So this, this went on and I love education. I've always loved learning. So, but the main thing is my eldest son was going in the year 2000. He graduated mm -hmm. and was going to go to college. So I took him on a number of college campus visits fell in love with the University of Northern Iowa's campus. Oh. And I thought, you know what, Jared, my eldest will be here because that's where he decided he wanted to go. I'm like, I think I'll go here too. <laughs> What did he think about that? <laughs> well, I mean, he's like, whatever mom wants, you know, right? And uh -huh. then we, we ended up being on the cover of Better Homes and Gardens magazine because someone seriously? had found out seriously that we were there on the same campus and they just could not believe it. So there's an article. It was the 2004. He was graduating that year and we're the cover wow. story when mom goes back to school and what he, you know, they said, what do you think about your mama doing this? He's like, all I can say is I like good grades too, but I will not go to the lengths that my mother will. Now he had straight A's all the time, but he didn't have to work at it. He was just naturally brilliant, uh -huh. right? But I would stay up till all hours, but that was what I loved. I put them to bed, you know, after I read to them all. Then mm -hmm. from 10 to midnight, every night, 9.30 or so to midnight, I would read um, all my books for, for college. And then I got three different degrees in my uh, fields of study are um art history literature and writing so all of that I loved all of that just perfect okay so how long did you go to college 15 calendar years wow okay <laughs> did you go part-time when yes. you first oh, yes. started always part, the whole time you couldn't go full-time yeah. okay. because I worked I worked full-time raised the children and yes. because I had in 
when I turned 40, that was the year I had my baby. So I was raising a baby oh, and I know, I know, right? Alone, <laughs> all alone. Cause she, you know, her daddy's not in the picture. So yeah, all alone raising this baby. Now she lives uh, with her husband happily in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And she just got her job, her dream job. She got her oh, master's. Wow. She just got her master's in social work. And now she is, I have both bracelets on for her because she gave me these for Mother's Day. This is oh, swag sweet. from where she works. Mindsight Behavioral Group, which is in Louisville. And she's a counselor mm-hmm. for people who are severely traumatized. And then she gave me this one. It says, Mom. And it's got hearts all over it. Oh, <laughs> that's beautiful. So that's it sweet. sounds like you've got a really close relationship with oh, your children. All of them. Yes. Thank you, sweetheart. And that's yes. so important, you Thank know, you. just to stay connected to yeah. our kids. And yeah. just, it's a little different, isn't it? When they become an adult, like yeah. it's a little different. The dynamics yeah. change just a little right. bit, but a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's still incredible. Yeah. Well, let's take a real quick break, okay? okay? Perfect. And uh, we'll be back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. Vicki St. James is my guest. Okay, Vicki, you're also an editor, correct? Yes. Yes, that is correct. How did you get into that and what do you do? Okay. And the name of that, my website is stjamesediting.com. So S T J A M E S editing, E D I T I N G.com. So, yep. Now, the thing about that is I get so many spam messages. Please don't reach out to me on that. I'll Mm -hmm. tell you how to reach out to me, but you can see everything I do. So reach out to me at the S485539 at gmail.com. I love your voice. I'm just listening to your voice going. (laughs) You've got a great voice. Oh, you sweetheart. Thank you so much. So I love editing. How I got into it, my eldest son, Dr. Jared Smith, who, by the way, is the superintendent of schools for Waterloo. Um, Wow, that's a big job, you know, right? It's a big job. 10,000, wow. you know, 17,000, whatever it is, students. My and like, he just loves it. He goes to each school every day, has lunch with the kids. He'll sit down with them and say, okay, tell me what keeps you up at night? Can I help you? Aww. I'm like, this, this man is amazing, right? And you <laughs> raised him. <laughs> I know, I raised him. I'm like, yeah, but they're all like that. And, you know, my second eldest son, Joshua, uh, he is a CFO in a company that he is partner and a CFO in, um, in Carolina, North Carolina, sorry, Raleigh. And then my next uh, child, uh, Stephanie, is um, an ARNP with um, a, a local, a local, um, bo- I call her a bone doctor, but you know, yeah, it's orthopedic, yeah. ser- it's orthopedic, orthopedic surgery, orthopedic. but to, yeah, when I broke my ankle, she did the whole thing, set it prepared for it so I call her a bone doctor and then she my is. Next, I know right then my next child Jonathan is an engineer with Cisco and then my baby girl who we mentioned earlier is um, a counselor for severely traumatized people with mm. mind sight in Louisville Kentucky so I'm proud of every single one of my children so my eldest son was at that time getting a PhD which he received in 2017 so about 2016 he said mama um, since you have a master's in English um, could you possibly edit my PhD dissertation. I'm like, whoa, I felt a little overwhelmed by that until I opened it up and started reading, catching his passion. Mm -hmm. His thesis was the following, caring teachers will produce more successful people down the road. It was original research that no one else was doing. Mm -hmm. He interviewed, gosh, 150 to 200 people one-on-one to talk about where they are now in life and what their teachers were like in the past. And he Mm. found that correlation that if you get a caring teacher who asks certain questions about like their open-ended, like their futures and all that, that puts them on the road to success. I'm like, wow. It's so true. It's so true. And it's so beautiful to know Mm. that and that nobody else was writing about that. So Mm -hmm. I felt like, wow, I'm on the cutting edge of brand new research. And it's my son, too. And so um, that's how I got started with the bug. And then he's like, Mama, I have several of my friends who need the same thing. And our editors at uh, Iowa State University, that's where they were going at the time. 
they cost so much, like seven, eight thousand dollars for one of these. Could you do it a little cheaper and then you can do all of ours? I said, <laughs> honey, yes, I'll give you all the good neighbor discount. And oh, that's wow. how I started doing this. And I found out I fell in love with this work. That and doesn't that take a while, Vicki? I mean, yes. to edit. I it mean, does. you're going yeah. through everything, and yeah. Um, so God wired you in a way that yeah. is unique. It's very unique, Aww. Vicky. Thank from, you, sweetheart. It Thank is, you. and you're very talented, and I love your voice. And so you Aww. do voiceovers as well. I think that's mm -hmm. fascinating that you Thank do voiceovers. Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate it very much so. And I just feel so blessed by God and, um, and my children, you know, I've been doing all of this at a stand up, um, you know, uh, desktop computer mm -hmm. and my children all got together and surprised me with a laptop. I'd never had a laptop in my life. They're like, mama, if you're going to do this, we want you to be, you know, you know, portable, you can go to coffee shops, mm -hmm. sit down, get, grab coffee and edit or sit on the couch with the three kitties and, and edit on the couch. I'm like, Yes. And that really <laughs> revolutionized everything. It opened up your world. Yes, it really did. So <laughs> editing, like you help people with their literary works to help yes. get published. Is that what you do yep. as well? I do some of that, but in uh -huh. today's, uh, gosh, today's landscape is so beautiful for self-publishing. Mm. You can save so much money and I just want to help them save money. Yes, yeah, I've gone to, yeah. uh, you know, I've gone to agent, I've been an agent, I've gone to publishing companies and we've had some success, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and knocking on a lot of doors. Whereas you can do it yourself for mm -hmm. free because when you go through those people, um, I just... I mean, not to diss them, they're amazing, but the publishing companies, you're going to spend about $10,000 basically right, is what right. you're going to spend. Whereas you could do, I edit books for about 5,000 a piece. Mm. And so they're saving 5,000. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, you know, we upload it onto, onto Amazon and everybody uh, sees it and they sell it like crazy. Yeah. So why not? Why not do this for half price? Right? Sounds like a win-win to me. Yeah. Okay, win -win. We, we've only got like a minute. I know it's not okay. long, so we're going to have to do this again. Okay, Vicki? Yes, let's um, do it again. So what's your dreams? Um, what do you have going? Um, yes. What's going on with you af after this, after radio? Oh, wow. So um, so after radio, I'll have a podcast in about seven years. I, I just love what I do, and I love Koloff Media. We talked yeah. about them a lot at length earlier. I believe wholeheartedly in this in this company. I'll stay till I'm 72 minimum. Maybe they could persuade me to 75, but that's about yeah. it because I've got, you know, other goals too. And one would be, you know, to um, be full-time in the editing realm, which I mm. absolutely love. And I also ghostwrite. So if somebody okay. has a beautiful burning story, I will write it for you. Oh, that so that's good. that's the other thing. And I guess I wanted to share that I am single and happily single. I've been married three and a half times. People are like, "What's with the half?" Well, I gave back. I gave the diamond back because well, I was I wasn't happy. So yeah. so my thing is, I intend to remain single for the rest of my life. I do date. I have great friends, yeah. but I love my independence. I want to go that. home at night and just do my own thing. You know? I love that about you, Vicky. <laughs> Vicki, Vicki I'm going to have you come back on, okay? Thank you so yes. much for being such oh, a wonderful guest. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Teresa. What a joy it's been for me. Absolutely. And thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.